Hey guys, it's Janet Wakelin, your Remarkable Stampers Upline, here with some tips for you on great photos. As I've spent time in the last couple of months really trying to take my own business to another level, one of the things that I've been really paying attention to is photography and the images that I'm putting out there on social media in marketing um, my classes to my customers and my newsletters and all of those kinds of things. And as I've spent more time doing that, one of the things that I've noticed is how important great photography is to your marketing efforts, the presentation of your finished project and things like that. And one of the things that I'm noticing is, is that the projects that are getting the most views and getting repinned and getting shared and posted elsewhere are indeed um, the images that are photographed much better. Now, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money to do great photography. What I'm finding, at least for me, the very basics are good lighting, my cell phone, and then just a nice clean background. And so for starters, just a nice simple white background can work great for you when you are just starting out, or if you're doing everything that you can to have the greatest profit from your business as possible. So I'm going to share with you some great ideas for other inexpensive things when you are ready to move on from just natural lighting and a simple little whiteboard and your cell phone. So we're going to look at all of those ideas together. So for me personally, I do use a photo box. My um, natural lighting station in my craft room is actually where I create, and so I have to move a lot of stuff out of the way in order to photograph over there. Upstairs in my kitchen, um, I could photograph up there, but then that's up and down the steps. So for me, I am blessed that I do this. Now, I do photograph um, a whole bunch of projects at once, and then I go ahead and I edit them a whole bunch at once, and then I sit down and I do a bunch of blog posts and internet work and things like that. So I do things in batches. So for yourself, again, depending on the space that you live in, working in batches could be a great way for you to utilize um, your natural lighting, your space, and things like that. I also know that for myself, um, I kind of crafted all kinds of crazy hours, so um, there's not always great natural lighting at midnight or 2 a.m., so that became an issue for me, or sometimes when I was ready to do all my foot photography work, it was the grayest day of the month, so that didn't always work. So for me, I was ready to make an investment in my business, and what I purchased was this little photo booth. You can find them on Amazon and Etsy. I like it because it's collapsible. I can take it to retreats. I can move it elsewhere in the house or take it on the road with me if I want, things like that. But it, so it does totally fold flat. This one did come with four lights, so it came with some different lights and some different backgrounds, and it was all of around $40, $45. So take a look at Amazon and take a look at Etsy, not Etsy, Amazon and eBay, excuse me, and just type in um, portable photo box and see what comes up for options and things for you. But I like this size, and you're going to see why I like to work with this size in particular. And in the team Facebook group, I'll put a link to this one specifically for you. So photo booth natural lighting if you don't have natural lighting then obviously you want good lighting and you can already see what a difference good lighting is going to make moving it in from the side and the top and I'm um, down here and you're going to want to make sure that you're avoiding um, shadows and things like that as you're working with it so then one of the other things that I photograph with is my cell phone I don't use any fancy camera or anything I like having everything right here on my phone it's easy for me to work with it's easy for me to add a quick watermark send it someplace social media whatever or then just simply you know transfer it all to my computer but I like to get down right on level and just take my picture straight on with my card now some people are doing amazing things with what's called flat photography and photographing from the top straight down over their work and that's definitely an option for you. Um, I just simply hold my cell phone but if you find that you're a little shaky and you're not holding it still enough they do have little um, like the Gorilla Clip stands and things like that that you could put your cell phone in and take photos and things like that. So let's start looking at some of the backgrounds and things. Now, I do know that the wood grain background is very, very popular right now, but I tend not to go with the flow. And I heard a very successful demonstrator say recently um, in a training session, what's nobody else doing? How can you stand out? And right now, I didn't feel like I would stand out with wood grain. I love the look. You're going to see a little piece of wood grain here, an optional idea for wood grain. And there's a time when wood will tie into my project, but I wanted some other options out there. And I wanted some really cost-effective options so that I felt comfortable enough 
having a few different backgrounds to work with and ones that were easy and small and things like that. So one of the very first things that I found was this really nice 14 by 33 inch grid board. This is from Staples. And what's nice about that is I can set it in my surface, or again, if you're just working against a counter on your table, put a vase back there, nobody will see it, it'll hold the background up. You've got that nice flat surface, and there's nothing better than a nice crisp white background to make your card pop. And so I love that because then I've got a lot of free white space to put my, my graphic, any other information that I want to put about that card on it. So never underestimate that nice, simple, clean white background. And again, this is very, very portable um, for you to take with you. And what it looks like, at least at Staples, we don't have an Office Max in town, all we have is Staples. Grid board and it's 14 by 33 inches, so you might also be able to find it online and things like that if you don't have anything local to you. And it's just one board. And the other side's a little bit rougher um, it has a little bit of a corrugated look too so depending on the card you might want to use that side so you've got two sides there to work with and then look how tiny and small that is and it folds up so as I was looking for alternative ideas and expensive ideas a couple of weeks ago I made a trip to the hardware store with the intent of finding tile because I know that they make tile pieces that are 12 by 12 and 18 by 18 and I thought those would be great backgrounds and sure enough they most definitely are you've got these beautiful like marbled look pieces that look just beautiful when you set your card down on side of them and so um, here you can see like another beautiful tile and these will range anywhere from three you can even get expensive, $10, 11 $12. So again, they're not quite as cheap as I wanted them to be, but it was the idea that I had in my head, and it was the aisle that I went straight to, and I bought a few of these and came home. The downside that I was finding to tile is A, they're kind of noisy, B, they're heavy, and so that makes them a little bit challenging. But they did have some fun options that were attractive to me and that I like. So here you can see this really fun stone piece here. And I can lean that up or lay that down so it had this nice piece. It is mesh on the back, so it just works as a solid 12 by 12 piece. So that gave me some great options. Another fun one that I found that I've been loving working with is this little brick piece here. And I can just lean it up and I can have, you know, coordinate with a mat. I can put white behind it or vanilla. So I've got that nice piece to work with. So that was a fun option with tile. So that was something that struck me and that's what I was working with for a while. But I needed something else at the hardware store and this time I couldn't find what I wanted and so I had to wander every aisle. And I am so glad I couldn't find what I wanted because I stumbled onto something that makes me even happier than tile and is so much less expensive. We're talking 60 to 70 cents a sheet. They're 18 by 18 inches which are perfect. And that is vinyl. They have these individual vinyl tiles. This one here has kind of a neat grungy bluish gray um, background look. Perfect for Halloween and fun stuff like that. This one has um, a neat marbled look. So, and I did get two of each so that I can match them up. Here's a nice um, kind of a neutrally gray one that kind of brings out some of the whites in them. And so these were great and I love these ideas. And then what I have is, you know, I can mix and match the backgrounds. Or I can do same on same on, and in that, you know, less than a dollar a piece, these were a worthwhile investment in my business. I don't worry about the paper. They are self-adhesive and sticky. I could take my X-Acto knife and trim them down, but I don't get those images in my photo, so I'm not worried about that. So that gives me something fun there to work with as well. Then another option for you, um, I love table doilies and table runners and things like that. And so um, just working with those. I like the runners the best when I'm doing photos because I can take and I can um, tack it in behind and then I've got a piece for the back and the piece in the front. This was one I just found on clearance so I need to take and iron it. But I have a bunch of fun other old lace doilies that were creating some fun nice little looks. So you may want to look in your own little cupboard and see what you have in your cupboard or if you're Somebody who does sewing and work like that, you may have some inexpensive little lace pieces and you could see where maybe like this card has a little bit of lace on it. So in a set of the brick, it might look pretty against the lace or if you're doing a wedding photo or something like that, that might be nice. So look around your house. You may have some really pretty little doilies, but again, you want to make it not as busy. You still want the focus to be on the card, but what can you put in your background that's going to help you stand out just a little bit? and make your project just a little bit different. 
some other ideas for you because I promised you a bunch of different ideas. Let's just move this one up here for right now. These I love, you guys know me, you know that I love vintage stores and antique stores and flea markets. So these are just some rusty old grapes that I found. And again, putting them on top of the tile, the tile kind of pops up through, but it's a different look and can kind of break it up just a little bit and give you a whole nother look that you've got going on there. So that's a fun one. So let me show you a couple other ideas. Let's go back to our tiles here for just a second. A different size tile, now these ones I really do like, is this size here. And I haven't measured it, it's like six by 12 um, inches like that. And so what, what you can do with these is here, you can see I've laid two that way. And now I can simply just lay two like that. And it will stand temporarily long enough for me to photograph. Or I can choose to turn the whole thing around, getting a different look just like like this and setting them up so that'll give me you know it looks like two slats there so that's a fun alternative so this size tile and these for some reason aren't nearly as heavy or crazy so I tell you your hardware store is going to owe me a commission when you guys are done now for those of you who do like the wood look and I think that there's a time when the wood look really brings out the best in a card look at these great tiles that I found and so I can easily create that um, wood look with these little tiles, matching it against a different background or doing the same thing that I did just before. And it doesn't have to be really big, big pieces because I'm going to go ahead, oops, pretend like it's, pretend like it's working, okay? Just pretend like it's working. And I'm going to take my project and I'm going to set it up and I'm going to just kind of come in really close or I can always just crop and things like that. So, and then bring the whole project in close after I've taken its photograph. So all of this stuff out here doesn't matter at all um, when you're working with it. So then just another couple of ideas. Just again, get your wheels spinning. Oops. They're going to, I've got a whole bunch of stuff piled in here so that I could do this video a little bit easier. So, um, I was at Hobby Store the other day and they have these different colored poster boards. And again, these were $2.99 and inexpensive. And of course, fall and Halloween is coming. So with a little bit of hay or something, I can have a nice bright orange background for all of my fall and Halloween pictures. Or um, I like to decorate for Halloween. So I do have um, this little um, Halloween doily. So you guys may not be decorating this year. Instead, you may be bringing them down. And now I've got a cute little backdrop for my Halloween projects and things like that. I did find these in red, the other side they're green, so $2.99 and again they just make that simple and inexpensive background just like that for your photos and things like that. So just a quick review, um, natural lighting is always the best if you are blessed to be able to photograph at that time of the day or have um, a counter or a space that you can easily access or a skylight that shines down on your workspace, but if you don't have that you're definitely going to want some kind of lighting whether it's a setup that comes with lighting or you just go to the hardware store and buy little lamps that have clips on them so you can clip them where you want. I personally chose to have a more portable setup so that I could move my setup if I wanted to. If I was going to be on an extended vacation, I could take some of the elements with me. And I chose to invest in quite a few different um, inexpensive backgrounds so that I could vary the look of my project the way that I'm going to brand my projects is not necessarily with the background, but will be with good photography and then the um, graphic elements that I add to it, the words and the fonts and things that I use for them. So um, I'm excited to see where your photography of your projects goes. It is very, very easy to take it to the next level instead of just laying it on your counter, um, um, in a dark room, on a bedspread, whatever, things like that. It is very important that you start to take really good photos if you want to be noticed out there in the social media land and uh, to have your images stand out and have your customers notice them. So again, keep it simple, vary it up a little bit, have fun, and then check back and we'll be talking about graphics and things like that. So thanks for watching, guys.